You can drop the accent, though. I know it's not real. Oh, no, I, that's why I talk to everybody. I always greet people like that. I'm like, hello. Oh, you <laughs> spoke to me like that. But anyway. Oh, I've never met you personally. Hello, hello. All right. Hello, mate. How are you? That's how I usually Today on Coronation Street. <laughs> Which is still ongoing, isn't it? Um, the reason why I'm calling today is I was wondering if, um, I don't know about yourself, or maybe like Brian Wallace, a meteorologist, maybe a, a pilot out there, someone could tell me why I'm seeing so many shapes in the sky today. Like, I'm looking up in the sky and I'm seeing planes flying over and they're leaving streaks that are still in the sky right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I'm kind of curious about it. I don't know if anybody knows why they're still up there. I thought they were supposed to disappear. Yes, they do disappear. Yeah, but uh, I'm looking up in the sky right now, and I can still see them. They're just, like, straight streaks. So I don't know if, like, maybe there's a pilot, um, maybe someone from Environment Canada, someone in air control. Like, that's got to be a pollution problem. Um, I know that you like to discuss the idea of, what do you call it, chemtrails, right? Is that what it's called? Is, that, is, this where, is this where this is going? Uh, I'm just wondering if anybody else out there is questioning it, because I see planes flying over and leaving trails that create clouds. I mean, I watched it. I'm outside all day, and that's exactly what happened. The plane flies over, then it's it called stretches a, out. Yeah, it's and called a condensation trail. Right. Right, which should disappear yeah. and dissipate, not persist and create clouds. Mm -hmm. So do you time these things? I mean, are you, are you out there with a stopwatch? I'm I'm out all day. Yeah. I love being outside, and I exercise a lot. That's what I do. I actually work overnight, so I have all day to do whatever I want. Lucky man. What kind of work do you yeah, do? Yeah, I know. I'm a delivery driver. I'm so you know the roads? Yes, and they're terrible. Well, uh, listen. I'm more worried about the skies, though. Well, let's talk about the skies for a second. If uh, Don't the uh, condensation trails remain in the sky a little longer during exceptionally warm temperatures, such as we have been experiencing over the past few days? I have no idea. I, I'm, I'm not uh, proficient in that. Come on. I know you, I know you study this. I know you study this, uh, this topic uh, regularly. I've heard your call to the other uh, hosts of the, these talk shows, and I, I know that you you have an answer to something like that, because you, you could not have studied it as thoroughly as you do. I know you do, Todd. I know who you are, because we've chatted about this. So give me an answer, uh, anecdotally even, if you, if you can't. Listen, neither you nor I are climatologists, but condensation trails remain in the sky longer if it's warm or for a shorter period of time to form in the upper atmosphere? To my knowledge, if it's cold and dry. Uh -huh. So if, in, with my logic, I would think then, how come in the wintertime our cars don't leave trails that stick around and make clouds? Because they're not in the upper atmosphere, and it has to do with how much moisture is in the upper atmosphere. If there's a lot of uh, moisture, the condensation trail will last uh, in the sky for a lot longer than it would if there was no moisture, and given the nature of the humidity that we're experiencing, that's why the condensation trails are in the sky for a longer period of time. I don't know. I'm not looking up in the sky to see how long that they are there, but I know that that is why that happens, and I'm not a climatologist. Well, uh, I think it's really strange that we get this really thick blanket that blocks out the sun so thick that you can't see it. I don't remember when it used to be like that. Mm -hmm. So you live on the Avalon Peninsula, do you? Yes. Okay, it's called fog. Um, no, not when it's just a big, thick layer that looks like a blanket, but you can still see underneath it. I don't think that's fog. Ooh, tell you what, when, when, when that happened, call me back. And, uh, it because just happened for two weeks. That's what we just came through that almost gave us frost in the nighttime. Yeah. Okay. I heard it's called solar radiation management. It's a part of geoengineering, a way to combat global warming. You've heard that from whom? From many different people. 
there's climatologists that are talking about it. There's seminars where they're talking about geoengineering and how to do it. All right, I'll bite. Yeah. Tell you what, send me some information to VOCM's uh, email. That's nightline at VOCM.com, and I'll have a look, and I'll talk to Brian Walsh, who's a meteorologist, and I'll... Uh, I'll yes, way to go. Engineering stuff. What do you say, Todd? Then we can have another chat. Fuck yeah, so you did it right. Awesome. Deal? Sure. Pick his brain. I would love to. Deal. Okay, buddy, send me the info, because otherwise I'm operating blind. No, no, that's okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's Todd. He is not British. We're going to...